Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Archihex video. And today we're going to be taking a look at populating uneven surfaces with objects. With a bit of Rhino script and some functionalities within Rhino, I was able to create this effect relatively quickly. So I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Alright, so here is our bare rhino file that doesn't have any trees or people. And as you can see, there are some plain geometries that are manipulated in such a way that it creates this nice curvature, uh, which might be a little difficult to populate if you were to do it manually. So let's copy in some people in and paste them in. Alright, so what we're going to do is we'll first go to the plan view and isolate these guys and place them in plan. Doesn't matter if they're in the right height, um, just make sure to do it uh, somewhere in the air because we're going to be dropping them in the future. So I'm going to be making a couple of copies. Da -da. So today we'll be using two kinds of scripts. Um, the first one I'm gonna use is random select. So what the script allows you to do is get a sample of people and enter the percentage and it'll randomly select that percentage of people from your selection, uh, which allows you to kind of rotate them and scale them so that you can add some arbitrary randomness that is somewhat hard to achieve when you were to do it by hand. I like to run it a couple of times. Sometimes you can just rotate them or scale them. Yep. That. Okay. So I'll go ahead and delete some of these guys. Before we get, in, get into uh, dropping these people onto the surface, uh, I'll be creating a new surface that is a singular. I'll be creating a single surface that allows me to drop these people to. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these guys. Type in hide. And we'll go to the plan view and use the drape command. Type in drape. And so if you want to drag over the whole area oh, to make sure geometries are unlocked and draw a small window across the site on which we will be dropping the people on. Now, as you let go, you'll see that it creates a brand new geometry that looks flat from the top. But once you go to the perspective, you realize there's a whole new surface that kind of follows the contour of the site. Now, this is going to be instrumental to dropping our people because drop to surface script only allows us to select one surface at a time. And so you can see, otherwise, there are too many surfaces to drop the people to. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll unhide the people. So I'll type in show. And I'll start bringing in, in the second script, which is drop object to surface. You can find the script at juliometry.com. And he provides these amazing scripts for free, so be sure to check him out and give him some support. So I'll simply drag this in and drop it into the Rhino window and just follow the prompt, which tells me to select the surface and select objects to drop. So this script will automatically calculate the z-space, the height of the geometry, so that it touches the uh, surface that we have originally selected. 
Now, once the people have moved to the surface, we can go ahead and delete this. Now, as you can see, people generally land around this right place. There are some inaccuracies due to the drape's inaccuracy. So, drape can only follow the topography so uh, closely. So, in places that require like sharp landings like this, it doesn't turn out too well. In order to combat that, we'll be undoing this. Control Z to undo. And I'll delete the drape. Now, one thing you can do is increase the drape resolution. Which allows us which which allows the drape to follow the topography a little bit more closely. And you can do that by clicking here and typing in number. So the smaller the number, the more closely the drape will follow. So let's try that. We'll type in one, then draw a new window across the site. Now, as the resolution gets higher, you find that the drape command takes longer time. So make sure to choose the right amount of spacing for your purpose. The bigger the site area, we tend to require less accuracy. So it could be a way to compensate for um, the amount of time it takes. If that made any sense. So I'll go ahead and unhide the billion type in show. And drop this script in again. Drop object to surface. Select the surface to be populated. Select that. And for objects, we'll select all the people and press enter. This again might take a little bit of time, but here it, here they are. Um, I'll just get rid of this surface now. And as you can see, people follow the contour a little bit more closely. So that's a perfect solution. There are some places where you need to adjust them manually, but gets everyone in the ballpark. And sometimes that's all you need in a large scale demonstration. And it works pretty well on um, more even surfaces or sloping gently. It's places where it slopes more gently, like that. So, yeah, there it is. So, you can repeat the same process for um, cars or trees, and you'll result in something like this. So try different things out with different spacings and different geometries and see what works the best for you. But this was a brief overview of populating complex surfaces in a matter of seconds. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.